what we have over here is a pressure control solenoid A, which is the bottom amp clamp. That is on channel one, and it'll be a yellow wire. Then we're on pressure control solenoid B with the middle clamp. Uh, that is obviously going to be channel two. It's going to be the red wire. And uh, then we have pressure control solenoid C, which is going to be channel three, and it'll be a green wire. Now, just so that you know, uh, we're going to see in part, we're going to see one amp on pressure control solenoid A. We're going to see a half an amp on pressure control solenoid B. And we're going to see one amp in pressure control solenoid C. Now this is in preparation for a park to drive engagement. Now typically when we go to uh, uh, park to drive, um, you'll, you, we may see a fluctuation in the pressure control solenoid as we make that transition. But what we're actually going to do is make a transition from park into reverse. Now, if you remember, I was telling you before, pressure control solenoid C is used to put the direct clutches on. The direct clutches are on for reverse, and it's on for third, um, uh, fourth and fifth. So these solenoids, if we've got one amp on the solenoid, we got minimum pressure. So we're going to go to reverse, which means we're going to need to have full pressure to put the direct clutches on. So we're going to get to see shift solenoid, uh, pressure control solenoid C go to zero amps to put the direct clutches on and that's going to be channel three with the green wire. Now, one little extra tidbit. Sometimes, um, even though we might see a, the amp drop to zero, we still may have a delayed engagement in the reverse. Rarely happens, but inside the valve body there's two check balls and one of them's in what we call a bathtub, a shuttle, a shuttle ball. That shuttle ball has got a fully seat for the direct clutches to apply. So sometimes if we have a problem with the ball, even though we see the amp drop on pressure control solenoid C, we still may have a delayed engagement in, in the reverse. But at least we know the computer's command. So what we're going to do is take a look at the... Um, at the... Uh, at the screen. At the screen. And Wayne, we have a question first on the amp clamps. They want to know, and I'll answer this, what we have it set up on. The setting is 1 MV equals 10 milliamps. So that conversion also goes into 100 millivolts equals 1 amp. It's the first click on these UEI clamps. We're using the e-scope and uh, Wayne will be explaining the colors. Once again, you're going to need to point out right. on okay. what we have. So now what we see here is we're at a half an amp on pressure control solenoid B. Now the B is at a half an amp and all we're going to do is go from park to reverse to neutral to drive and it'll always stay at a half an amp throughout those ranges. So we're never going to see pressure control solenoid B change. You will see it if you went out on a road test but we're not going to be doing that. And that's the red line we're looking at. That's the red line. Now up here on one amp, we're seeing pressure control solenoid A, which is the yellow wire, and we have pressure control solenoid C, which is the green wire. And what we're going to see happen when we go to reverse, we're going to see this green wire go to zero amp, which is what's going to put the direct clutches on and seat that, that, that bathtub check ball. So why don't we go and put it in reverse? Alex, please put it in reverse. reverse. Now look at that. It went right down to zero amps, full pressure, and it should have engaged in the reverse smoothly and immediately. And let's look at that one more time. Park. You see that green line went up? Reverse. And we went down. Now, okay. Now if there was a delay with the with the voltage uh, uh, with the amperage dropping down then I would look at the transmission range center because if the computer didn't recognize the reverse engagement, it wouldn't change the pressure control solenoid C. Now, we're going to put it back in the park. The pressure control solenoid C, as you can see, is still at one amp. Pressure control solenoid A went down to a half an amp because now we have both A and B are at a half an amp. Go ahead, put it back in the park. Now we're both up to one amp right. and still at a half an amp. Right.
So what you're going to see is now pressure control solenoid A has gone into, when it dropped down to a half a volt, half an amp, when we went into the drive engagement. And remember, both pressure control solenoid A and B are controlling line pressure as well as servo apply release. And um, when we actually make a shift into second gear, we have to put the overdrive band on. Uh, shift pressure control solenoid B is responsible for that, while pressure control solenoid A will handle the intermediate band for third gear, but we won't be able to see that. But we can see how these uh, amperages will alter. And remember, A and B is checked on the mainline pressure tap. C is on a pressure tap all of its own for reverse and for fourth and fifth. So that's what we have here. A uh, question that we have, Wayne. Uh, someone says, well, I don't have a lab scope. What is another way that I could view this current? Well, th that brings us to the next step. Because the next step is being able to do uh, solenoid fast checks. Um, and, and we're going to show that with this vehicle. But the idea of how we're going to show checking for voltage, checking for ohm, checking for amp, can be employed with a whole variety of different vehicles. Uh, we just wanted to show you a little bit about pressure control solenoid A, pressure control solenoid B, and pressure control solenoid C. So now we're going to go and show how to do some of these other checks. Hey, Wayne, uh, wait one minute. Before we do that test, how about some of these portable amp clads at a little more than an amp that you could save? So depending on, always make sure you got a good battery, zero it, and you should be okay. Now we can move on, uh, Wayne, to the next thing. If they don't have an amp clamp, we're going to show them the solenoid fast check. Okay. What are we doing now? Okay. This is the connector, obviously, that has all the transmission wires going to it. This is where we were amp clamped to pressure control solenoid A, B, and C. Um, what we can do real quick is fuse 38 in the fuse box over on the left side of the engine compartment. Um, is what supplies the power down to the solenoid block. It's one power supply and that power will go down to the solenoid block and then provide power to every single one of the solenoids. And we're talking about pressure control solenoid A, B, C, shift solenoids A, B, C, and D, as well as the lockup solenoid, the TCC solenoid. Now with it unplugged and the key on, I should see battery voltage at every one of those terminals if that fuse is okay and the circuit from the ignition to the fuse and from the fuse down to the solenoid block we should see battery voltage returning here up to the computer where the computer can control those solenoids on the ground side so we're going to turn the ignition on and the first one we're going to check is pressure control solenoid A we should have battery voltage. And look at that, we do. 12 volts, 870 millivolts, battery voltage. Now B, pressure control solenoid B. Same thing, battery voltage. Pressure control solenoid C. Same thing, battery voltage once again. Now at the top here is the lockup solenoid. Same voltage, battery voltage. Pressure, shift solenoid D. 12 volts, 870 millivolts. C. Same thing, battery voltage again. B, once again the same, and A. Beautiful. Now we know we don't have an open circuit. Right. But let's open that circuit, right? If, well, we could, we could open that circuit if you wanted to uh, perhaps pull the fuse. And, and then we could even uh, um, do a resistance check if we wanted to. So with the 15 amp fuse pulled out, obviously we have nothing. We're going to see that it's the fuse is out on the battery. There's a little blue thing. We're going to come back to Wayne. And right on the meter. We and have absolutely no voltage here. But now what we could do is we actually could put the negative lead of the meter in the fuse area and actually do resistance checks of the solenoid if we wanted to do that. And that would be if you could put the ground wire in there, let me, get a, let me get a pen. I'm going to set this to ohms, and it'll be the leg on the right side. Yeah. 
lay on the rack. Okay, so now I'm going to be checking pressure control solenoid A, and I should have around 6 ohms. And look at that, 6.2. I'm going to do the same thing with pressure control solenoid B. And I have 6.1. Pressure control solenoid C. I have 6.2. Now I'm going to do the lockup solenoid. And the lockup solenoid is around 10 ohms. And I have 12.5. So the higher the resistance, the lower the amperage. That's correct. Now. Uh, all the other shift solenoids are approximately 25 ohms. So we're going to see here, wait, we have 29 ohms. And temperature always changes yeah. resistance. Temperature always changes, and obviously we have it a pretty hot, so we're a little bit on the high side, but within range. So now we know, right now, we know our pressure control solenoids are measuring 6 ohms. We know that the lockup solenoid is measuring 12 ohms, and we know that our shift solenoids are measuring almost 30 ohm. Now, we already know what voltage we have. We now know the kind of amps we should see. We'll be able to see about two amps on the pressure control solenoids. We should see about one amp, or a little over one amp, on the lockup solenoid, and we should see about a half of an amp on all the shift solenoids. So now, how we're going to do that is we want to be able to put the fuse back in. Yeah. So we're going to use Ohm's law. This is basically what you're doing. People yep. don't like Ohm's law, but we showed them voltage, resistance, the amperage has to be in spec. I'm on the negative side of my battery. Wayne is in the 10 amp jack in his fuse. We know we don't have anything with super low resistance that's going to cause a problem. And now we're going to check the current flow go into each solenoid. And we'll start off with pressure control solenoid A. And look at that, we're supposed to have two, two amps. Two amps, 100 and something milliamps. Very good. Pressure control solenoid B. Two amps, 130 or 25 milliamps. And C. C, about the same thing, two amps, 100 and something, going down, milliamps. Right, now we're gonna do the lockup solenoid, which should be about 1.2 amps in that area. And we have 1.0 amps. But you know, Wayne, the, the problem here that maybe people are thinking out there, this is not something that's constant amperage. These are duty cycle. Right, they're duty cycle. And the duty cycle will determine the amperage of the solenoid when you're connected to it while it's operating. Right, because any PCM or TCM that is going to keep something on that long, more than 6 milliseconds, okay, at over an amp, 1.2 amps, they'll burn the driver out. Right. So you got to always make sure that we don't have that type of issue. Again, right. these are duty cycles. What we're actually doing is an actual load test on the entire circuit ourselves, making sure that between ohms and volts we're having the proper current draw. And, and in, in this way we could actually find if there is a problem with the way the uh, solenoid, the, the harness connector is plugged into the pass-through connector on the solenoid block, which is, what, as we saw earlier, the air conditioning uh, drips down on that and can give us some issue. Uh, and you know the nice thing I like about this, Wayne? You know, we're doing this on camera, but guess what? People that are doing this in a shop, it ain't even going to take them this long. No. Once you have the right information and you don't have to worry about being on camera or anything, this is a lot easier to do, isn't it? Right. It, everything that I'm doing can actually take a matter of minutes. I can do this fast solenoid check so quickly I'll know that I've got my power there, I know that I have my ohms are there, and I know that I have my current draw is there, and I can do it in a matter of minutes. And, and again, this type of solenoid fast check, if you really scrutinize different wiring diagrams, you can figure out how to do this on many vehicles, like Dodge vehicles has a relay that supplies power down to the solenoid block on these 41 TE transmission. You jump the relay, and so that you have that power going down there, and then on the ground side by the TCM, you do exactly what I'm doing here. And you know, Wayne, I, I want to give you guys a plug, ATSG. This book here that maybe you should show them has all the information 
that we've been talking about here. And you can get that right off the ATSG website. Yeah, it has the, the connector pinouts, the wiring diagrams, it has the, the solar resistance. Readings, right. Resistance. Right. It has all of that here. Thanks, G. You're welcome. I got one more amp check to make. I want to check my shift solenoid amps. And these are supposed to be about a half an amp. In. Okay, so now what I want to do is check shift solenoid amperage, and we're supposed to see about a half an amp. And look at that, 447 milliamps. And the same thing, this is shift solenoid D, and then we're going to go to uh, C. 443. And then we're going to go to B. 461, 460. And A. And 449. So, milliamps. In, in a matter of minutes, we checked all the amperages, we got all the volts, we got all the ohms, we know that we got a good circuit here. And it's pretty simple to do. Right. The next check that we want to do, that, that's good to know, is that all the uh, speed sensors, the turbine shaft speed sensor, the input shaft speed sensor, and the output shaft speed sensor, they all share the same ground with the heated O2 sensors. And in order for us to be able to check the ground circuit this way, we have to plug this back so when in. We actually back probe this under a load. We should be under 100 millivolts. So that's what we're going to do next, G. Right. And you know, before we do plug that connector back in, we need to turn the key off. That's right. So Alex, turn the key off. Oh. Then Wayne's going to plug this in, and to do a voltage drop, the circuit has to be loaded. What do we mean by that? That means you're going to have to start the vehicle up when we have this back probe. So you're going to see, Wayne is going to back probe this. We're going to go on millivolts. We need to take our meter leads first and switch them into voltage. I'll get you the connector. Switch your leads first. Here's your back probe pin. I'll take, uh, yeah, you don't need, you can plug that right in the end of the wire. Just take, uh, take the end off. So we're going to take the end off, we're going to put our back probe pin on, and again we're going to back probe this first before we start it up and we need it running or the reading we get on millivolts DC, Wayne will change his scale once he gets this in there to millivolts DC and then we will uh, see what reading we have. This back probed, the engine is off, you can see we have some millivolts. We're looking for under 100. Take careful notice when Alex starts it up. Watch the reading. Go ahead, Alex. Look at that. We went 1,300 millivolts, and now we're down to about 30. What that was doing is pulling on the oxygen sensor, speed sensors, and other sensors on that circuit. Okay? So we're at 37 millivolts. Well below 100 millivolts. Well below 100, and we have a good setup here. Okay. All right, so now we got that check out of the way. And how long did this take us, the whole procedure? This took us no more than just a few minutes, but we, uh, being in front of the camera, we took a little bit more time explaining it. But if you knew how to do this, you can do this check within five minutes or less. Yeah. You become an expert in minutes. Yeah, once, once you do something on a vehicle as easy as this to learn from and you grasp the concept, you can look at wiring diagrams and become very imaginative on being able to do the same kind of checks, just knowing what kind of system you have, how the power is going down to the solenoid. Obviously, this will be working on solenoids that are operated on the ground side with a power supply. GM has, has a lot of that type. Ford does. Chrysler does. So there's a lot of vehicles on the road that you can employ this fast, simple solenoid check in your shop. We want to speak about reflashes. We talked about TSBs earlier, or earlier on. Right. And if there are any reflashes, you should check the vehicle for them, okay? And make sure you do all your updates. Yeah, and we have, um, we have a couple of reflashes that uh, related to this particular type of vehicle with a five-speed transmission, but there's also, this type of vehicle has a six-speed transmission, and there's quite a number of reflashes for them as well. So it, it's always good to check and see what's out there. There's uh, TCC shuttle issues, and, and there's uh, engine hesitations and fluctuations, a variety of different things that, that, that can be resolved with a reflash. 
That's true. And you know, one thing I want to remind everyone on Fords when you reflash them, once they're flashed, you can't go back. Right. So you always need to read any bulletins very carefully on what the reflash will do, what it'll fix, and if you're happy with that, you exhibit those particular problems that are in the TSB, then it's a good idea to update it. If not, you may not want to do it. So, you know, reflashing is something that is not hard to do. You need a battery maintainer. You've seen us have one on before, earlier on, during the night. The battery maintainer keeps steady battery voltage as we're doing a reflash. You cannot use a regular battery charger when you're doing this. Make sure you use a battery maintainer, and that'll keep a, a constant voltage with very low AC ripple going through the system. 